Um, thank you for being here. I know it's super late where you're at. It's, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what time it is here. It's 12.32 here, so that means it's 10.30 there, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, it's good to meet you, though, even though we have to do this through Zoom. Um, it's, it's the first time I'm doing a podcast and that I'm using Zoom, so it's like a whole, whole new experience. <laughs> uh, it's cool, though, that like not only just like doing Zoom and everything, but it's cool that like I met you through social media and then now you're here and now I'm talking to you, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, like social media has been kind of crazy. Just it, it's changed the game so much for just artists and whether it's like musical artists or digital, whatever, just social media changed the game completely. Mm -hmm. Do you want to just go ahead and introduce yourself, uh, say what you do, uh, just a little bit about you for everyone who doesn't know you and me too. Yeah, sure. Um, my name's Devolt. Um, it's a bit of a weird name. Uh, but I'm from South Africa. I'm 23. I'm an animator. We run a YouTube channel. That's probably the most successful thing of all. It's we're at like 140k subscribers. Uh, mostly doing horror animations and like some game stuff. Um, also do some music videos. That's probably how you find me through my social media. Um, yeah, do some music videos. Done some stuff for Vivo, UMG. Um, but YouTube's the main, the main focus right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just doing your own thing is always better than doing other people's stuff. Definitely. Did, have you always lived in South Africa? Did you move there? Well, you just born um, and raised there? Yeah. I've, I've been born and raised here. Um, yeah. My whole life moved throughout South Africa, a few places, basically lived everywhere in the country, but yeah, been here my whole life. I'd like to move or like, maybe canada canada seems cool but um yeah for now just stuck here <laughs> not the united states um that's why i, I want to go to canada because canada is basically the united states but just less drama i feel like less <laughs> drama and let's just you say that yeah. um, and also i recently watched this video where they said canada has the most drinking water per person in the world so it's like that seems pretty cool if we, Mad Max ever rolls around yeah. Canada's fine why so, do you think that is why do you think they have the most water per capita um I don't know it's a tough like I know in South Africa a big problem with water and stuff is usually just mismanagement and like pipes burst and stuff and no one intends to it so maybe they just have some really good infrastructure and they look mm -hmm. after this stuff <laughs> but, it, I have always thought it was just absolutely bonkers how something in the southernest tip almost of Africa could have British accents. So I want to talk to you about that for a little bit because you, I mean, not that it's the exact same, but if you put like a stupid American like me uh, and you put like a British person and an Australian and a South African in a line, they're speaking, I would have a very, and then obviously there's like Scottish and Irish and things like that, but I would have a very hard time distinguishing this, this sort of accents, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I think that's made just because um, a lot of um, South Africans was like just European at the end of the day, like way many generations back they just all came here and it's just um the main lang oh, well south africa's got 13 main languages like um, oh, okay hold on what are the like if you had to pick five of like the most you hear on a daily basis what are they besides obviously english i'm sure is um, english is the main one and then afrikaans that's another one i speak um that's that's probably the main one i hear the others are um mostly like native African languages. So it's even hard for me to just pronounce the names. I don't want to butcher names. Um, but yeah, no, there's like, a, I think it's like English, Afrikaans, and then the rest are like native um, African languages. And Afrikaans is basically just like a mashup of European languages, like mm -hmm. Dutch, German, there's some French in there. It's a, it's a weird one. Yeah. Um, so would you say, I, I don't know how to phrase this question living in south africa not like what is that like because obviously you were born and raised there but like more like 
living in South Africa, like what are like, what is the infrastructure like? Would you say it is more European like uh, architecture and things like that? Or would you say it has some mixture of African and, and um, European or like, how would you say like the culture is there? Um, once again, it's very like, you get your older places that uh, has very European influences, especially um, where I'm staying now. It's Cape Town. It's um, from what I've heard, it's supposed to be the creative hub of South Africa or whatever, but it's, um, it has a lot of Dutch inspired um, architecture and stuff with the buildings, but that's mostly the old buildings. All the new buildings are just modern. Um, uh, there was a way when I was looking for houses recently, there was this way that they always describe the houses. It's like contemporary, um, modern contemporary or something like that but it just means it's newly built and it looks it looks like your average house you know yeah it's very very seldom that you like find those classical african styled houses that you like see in the movies i guess okay that makes sense have you ever been to uh america or the united states I've never been out of the country. I was actually planning on going to France in September, but that was before COVID came around and everything just went to shit. So you've never been out of South Africa? I've never been out of South Africa. I really want to go to the US. It's like on my list of things to go. Where would you go? Basically. New York or LA? LA. You go to LA? I'd like to go to LA because New York just seems so much more expensive. Like I know the... Um, the multi-channel network that was signed with Channel Frederator, they're like this big um, animation network that handles a lot of big mm -hmm. YouTubers, um, animators on YouTube, and they um, help them with that. And they've produced shows like Fairly Odd Parents and stuff like that. But I know they're headquartered in uh, New York. And I've, I've thought about going there, but when I like checked out Airbnb prices for like LA compared to New York, I was just like, it's Expensive. crazy one bedroom tiny these little bachelor places and it's just yeah two three grand give me three seconds oh yeah so la new york is what we're talking about so have you heard of las vegas yes yes but I, i'm scared i'd get lost in las vegas like just i don't know yeah too many lights and too many things to do too many places to go i think it'll just yeah i get so, lost there I, I live, I've born and raised in Las Vegas. So it's, if you come out here, it's like, I don't know if there's any place in South Africa where it's just like pretty desert. And then there's like a major city. So like, I don't know, like, I, like America's known for it's like high rises, you know, like that's what I'm, I feel like America, like the big cities all have high rises, the skyline, New York, LA kind of not really, but New York, Vegas, um, chicago you know things like that and so the strip but like vegas is like all like normal like just like houses like just suburbs and then like there's the strip and it's just this like i don't know how long but just extremely high rises just like casinos basically so i think you'd have a good time i'm gonna be honest with you everyone does but uh, so so do you currently stay in las vegas i don't know how the how COVID is in South Africa for you guys, but in the United States, it's weird because like we're 50 States underneath one country, but each state has their own like set of like abilities that they can do, you know, there are like their own yeah, governments. Yeah. So like each state is different. So Las Vegas obviously is run by like casinos and things. So they want to stay open. So it's like weird and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then like, I also live in Oregon cause I go to school and I play football up there. Um, but everything's kind of like Oregon, super, uh, what you would call liberal and like super like progressive. So they like, they are super against um, people like coming together during COVID, which is weird, but so they basically like canceling football and everything. So I'm just with my family in Las Vegas right now, um, like celebrating Christmas and everything. But eventually I will go back to basically Portland area. I don't know if you've heard of Portland. Yeah. 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 Um, Port, Port, yeah. Portland's been a lot in the news this year. <laughs> yeah, it has. I was about to say that. I was about to ask you that. What is news like in uh, like, obviously your case would be South Africa, but like pertaining to the United States. So like, what do you guys hear about the United States? Oh, uh, well, personally, like I, um, I watch a lot of um, YouTube um, news type shows. I don't know if you know, like Philip DeFranco, for example, um, just like basically once a day you get your like whole 
American news in a nutshell. And then there's some de- uh, like world news in there. So like I try and get my news sources from actual American sources. Um, mostly leaning a bit, like you said, more liberal, like just more open-minded than the Republican. But, but then again, to each their own, just if you're not hurting anyone, you can have your own beliefs, I guess. Just don't offend anyone or hurt yeah. anyone. So a question I have for you pertaining to that is like, what is your guys's, I mean, I guess you could say government or media, how do they portray the United States? Like, I want to know how other countries like see the United States. Cause I'm only, I only see media through the eyes of the, so uh, of the United States. So like, I don't yeah. know, like, I just know, like, like everyone knows that like, we're this powerhouse, but like, there's all these problems. Like how do you, how does South Africa talk about the United States? That, that again is like a kind of tough question. Cause I don't um, really watch a lot of South African media and I don't know if that's an issue, but um, for the most part, it's, um, it, it's pretty much the same how Americans I would say have uh, discussed it, but just a bit less um, involved in a way where people in South Africa might be making, um, giving their opinions on what's happening and like, oh, they should do this, they should do that, but they're not there, so they don't have that much of a... But yeah, I don't think it's that much different than how Americans discuss America at the moment. But except for the fact that you guys are living it and it's actually affecting your lives, where from this side, it's just people making statements about things that don't really touch them. In a way. No, I get what you're saying. But so, but I remember when uh Donald Trump called um African countries shit all countries. I remember everyone was kind of pissed about that. Uh, I, I was like like he's got a point, like South Africa's like pretty sh- it's third world countries, like everything's pretty shitty, but you can't call a country a shit old country, I guess. Yeah. Like it's, uh, <laughs> Especially when you're the president of the United States, you know. Yeah, yeah. That that's something peop like people citizens are supposed to be saying. Like yeah. the president should try and be neutral. So my idea of South Africa is that it's it's actually like a pretty developed country. Is it in third you would think it's third world? Um yeah, it's def. I would say it's like as first world as a third world country can still be. Like there's there's a lot of poverty. There's like South Africa in particular. There's a lot of racial unrest, for example. Like we've had apartheid and like all that stuff. So like there's a lot of racial tension constantly. But I feel like it's getting better. The the biggest problem is just our whole government is just people over sixty seventy there's so little actual young people in the government. So it's all just, yeah, but it, it's pretty progressive, but there's still a lot of poverty. There's a lot of crime. I think South Africa is one of like the top 10 da- most dangerous countries, even though it's mostly just gang violence under themselves. Um, yeah, it's a weird one. That's why I'm like, uh, it's beautiful, but it has its like nature wise. South Africa is beautiful. We've got a lot of different animals. We've got a lot of different, like we've got deserts here. We've got not rainforests, but we've got forests. We've got beaches. We've got everything, but we still got our crime and our issues and our everything. So you said, uh, I don't know how you said it. I always thought it was apartheid. How did you say it? Um, oh, <laughs> Well, the correct way to pronounce is apartheid. Apartheid? Um, like that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, but I, Eng- like I've, uh, English people just tend to go with apartheid. So it's okay. apart and then, yeah, the rest of the word. Because <laughs> that, that, it's an Afrikaans word. That's why yeah. it um, doesn't translate well, but... Yeah. Yeah. So when you hear me speak, do you know immediately like I'm an American? Yes, yes, straight yes. up. So it's because there is weird, like, obviously, like, American English um, has different, like, there's Southern accents, and then there's, like, the, the, the New Yorker accent, you know? Um, but I would say I have, like, the, I wouldn't call it the West Coast accent, but it's, like, the West Coast accent. It's, like, the American accent. Like, this is what most people think of, I think. Like, when you see movies and things like that, 
um, most time when people are like, I don't know if you listen, like obviously I see like Juice World, he talks like this, or he does, yeah, yeah. Um, and everything like that. So like, but like you can like pick out and I have a question for you. Yeah, it just came to mind while I was thinking that. So we like to say us arrogant Americans with this type of dialect, we like to say that we don't really have accents. Would you agree? Or do you think like, this is just the American accent of English? Um, I think everyone has an accent. Uh, like um, I've had friends that have been born in South Africa and then like just before high school, they moved to Australia. And by now they have like an Australian accent, which is like, just confuses me. But I'm like, so I think just, it depends where you live. Just, completely changes the way you speak um so everyone has an accent but then again uh what does no accent sound like in that respect like i think if if you speak it you don't think you have an accent and then other people just make the assumption you have an accent because you don't sound like they do some some 420 type logic or some shit when i uh I always think to myself, like when I'm speaking another language, what do I sound like? Because like in my mind, even you, um, English, Irish, Australian, those are all English dialects. They don't really have accents. The accents are really like, I don't know if you ever spoke to someone who's like um, South American or uh, Mexican descent or Hispanic. They speak, uh, they have that Hispanic accent. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, that I would call that an accent. So I always think the accent comes from when you switch your language that you're speaking, you know? So like, I always wonder, like, say I go and I speak, um, I don't know, like the most one that I know is Spanish. And I would say Spanglish. Like I know a little bit of Spanish, you know, uh, cause I live in the, like Las Vegas is like pretty close to Mexico, like California, like SoCal and San Diego and everything like, and then like Texas and everything. There's like, so that was like the closest you can get to like um, um, Mexico. So like I, there's a lot of people who have like parents from Mexico or they were from Mexico that have that, that Hispanic accent. So I always wonder like if I speak Spanish, I probably sound so stupid. Or if I speak like Russian or German, I'm like, why would you listen to me? You know, do you, do you feel that way when you're speaking like some of the Afrikaans um, languages? Um, no. Well, my English used to be horrible. Like, um, it's not my first language at all. So I was like, I was, um, my whole life, I would, like school, everything was in Afrikaans and everything. So like up until I like almost started finishing high school, all my friends started being like just proper first language, English speaking people. That's when like my English really started improving. But before then I had like a thick accent, like a thick, you could hear, um, like, I've gotten a lot lately that it's like I sound kind of British or like kind of um, Australian, like people that don't really know how Australian sounds would just be like, oh, it's kind of Australian, British, maybe like New Zealand. It's a hard to place, but yeah, before I could properly enunciate certain words, which I still don't do properly now, mm-hmm. but it's been a struggle. <laughs> so that's, that blew my mind. What you said about, you guys don't like education is not taught in English. No, no, it is. Um, you get different like oh, schools, like you get okay. your like English schools, you get your African schools, you get your like African speaking schools. So like whichever language you want to be brought up in, there's a school for that probably. Um, yeah. Are you saying yeah. Afrikaans? Um, Afrikaans. So like I I have no idea what that is. You gonna like can you explain uh, that for me? Um the, oh no that's just that's just the language. Um it's uh, it's spelled A F R I K A N S. So it's like Afri almost like Africa, but it's Afrikaans. Oh, like two A's? Uh, did you say? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and can you just like speak it? Like just give a little like snippet of what it sounds like. Oh, I don't like doing it because I find it like super cringy. But um, just for idiot uh, Americans that are listening to this. Oh, I don't even know what to say. Um, oh, what can I say? Cash um, was lacker geweest. That means Christmas was nice. <laughs> I guess. So, do your parents speak that as their first language? Yeah, yeah. So my parents spoke it. Their parents spoke it. 
their parents spoke it. Okay. So, Are you? Yeah, yeah. So you're like how many? You're like a bunch of generations South African. Your family is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, probably like I don't want to take a wrong guess, but probably like 10, 15 generations. Like since they, since uh, Europeans came to South Africa, basically. Yeah, basically, yeah. So, I was just on find a grave one day. Um, I don't know if you know what that is. It's just like, it's basically like gravestones. You find gravestones. And um, it tells you like their parents and their parents. And my grandfather's on there. Um, and he lives in Iowa as my dad's dad. And then his dad, um, and then I, I kept going back. So my grandpa's grandpa was the first, um, was, uh, no. Either my grandpa's dad or my grandpa's grandpa was the first American Weirs. My last name is Weirs. Um, and so him and his dad, my grandpa's grandpa and his dad, I believe, they immigrated to America from Germany. So my family, my dad's side is from Germany. So I thought it was cool to see like my lineage and how, um, when I got here and stuff. Because the cool thing about United States um, is that like you go back far enough, you can find your family didn't live here once, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. I was just, I just didn't realize it was like that close back, you know, like I'm only like a fourth generation weirds, which is like, or like third or fourth generation weirds, which is like blew my mind. Cause like, I'm American. Like I'm the American. Like if you like anyone like talks to me, they're like, that's an American, you know? Yeah. But um, I thought it was cool to see that. So like, just to know that you, like you are uh, not 10 to 15. Cause you're taking, that was just a guess, but like to know that your family's been there for a while, that's cool. And like, I would always like to know like how Europeans feel like they're probably 30 to some of them are like 30 to 35 generations or in China, it's probably so many generations, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, that's crazy. Cause um, my, I think my family comes from France, I think. But then again, when I, whenever I Google my surname, it says it's Spanish. So I'm, I'm very confused, but they're just like, no, it's French. And I'm like, but Google says otherwise. So no one, re well, I guess if they say it's French, I need to take their word for it because they're all the elderly people that's been there. But Google never lies. <laughs> so what's your full name? Um, Devil Dallare. And Dallare is, a, I think Dallare means f of the king in Spanish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because when yeah. I Google translate it to French, it means nothing. But in Spanish, there's words. <laughs> It's devolved and the the V sound or the United States V sound being a W. Yeah, yeah. So it's devolved like that. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the closest anyone that's English has gotten to. <laughs> like cool. that's not South African because it's a very South African name. So I've gotten like dear wall. I've gotten devil. I've gotten a lot of. Weird... I thought it was Dewald. Yes, that's that's the most common one yeah. I get. Yeah. That's how we would say it. I would say. How would you say my name? Do you know my name? Um, it's Colin. Let me just call, so just Colin, yeah. Just call. It's that's a name in South Africa. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to make sure of the spelling because I know, like, um, I've gotten Colin before, but where it's like more. I don't know if you've ever watched Twilight, but like the Cullen, where it's the, like a, it, yeah, yeah, but it's like a yeah. C U L type spelling. Oh, Colin. Yeah, yeah. Like so Edward like, Cullen? Yes, exactly, exactly. Okay, yeah, I know. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, I, that's my name's. I think it's Irish, Colin. Um, yeah. there's, two, there's usually two spellings of Colin. Would it be one L or two? I have two. And then there is Colin, and there's also Callan. And there's... Um, I know a lot of people who, would like, have some accents. They call me Callan or, like, Colin. Colin. That's the one, like... Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's how I was expecting you to say it. Colin. Yeah. Um, so, not that this matters. I just want to know because I'm just, this is the way my brain works. What is, would the, be the race disparity in South Africa? Like not, like not disparity. That's not the word I was thinking of. What's like the ratio? Like how many white people would you say to Afri um, Africans would there be? Oh, that's, that's a tough one. I can actually, I can maybe Google that. Yeah, go ahead and Google it. I, I know, um... Wait, South African. Okay, it says South Africa is 
76% black South African, 9% white South African, 8% colored South African, and then 2.5. Yeah. What was that one after white? Uh, colored. That is like mixed race. Oh, oh yeah, say, yeah. Did you say colored? Yeah, yeah. That's what the locally the um the race is referred to as. Yeah, it's like like um, Trevor Noah, oh. um, for example. Yeah, yeah. He even speaks about it a lot in his like stand ups yeah. and his stuff. Yeah. But like, it's literally. It sounds like an offensive term, but when you like fill in documents and stuff, it's like one yeah. of the drop down like. That's offense. Very offensive in America. Yeah. You go to a, a light because they call them. I guess you would call them light skins in America. Yeah. Um, like yeah, like light skins would be a mix between white and black usually, and then sometimes like Asian and black. America's weird because we're really really hung up on race, like but like we're so many different races and it's like it's become almost if you have anything versus white people which is very dangerous because there's a lot di- more many different races in um the united states and america sorry for calling it america i know there's an entirely different continent too but uh um then uh just white people but it's it's there's like the race the, like war that there really is i wouldn't call it really a war but the race like argument is basically white versus non-white and it's even become it's really what it really is which is even more dangerous it's white straight men versus everybody else white women yeah. gay men all that stuff and that's really what it's become and then you and what it's become is like white men are like i don't know 33 percent of people in america probably something like that and the 32 33 is women white women and then there's like 13 percent uh black americans and then there's like I can't remember how many Hispanics and then there's Asians and that you can go down that, but it's be, like Donald Trump, you know, it'd be, it's become this like Donald Trump versus, uh, versus the, the uh, other side, you know? So I was wondering what it's like, because I know South Africa has dealt with race problems before. Would you say though, that the race problems in South Africa were just as bad as the United States? Or do you think there were like what you've seen, would you say they were a little less or, or even worse? I th- I think it's a tough one because everyone um kind of dealt with their own their own history with it. Like I think it's a t- touchy subject, and <laughs> as a like you said, as like a straight male, I didn't feel like it's really my place to comment on the race. But I I feel in a way it's maybe worse in South Africa because of the whole uh, segregated apartheid thing we had going, which ended before I was even born. But again being a white guy it, it it's still you'll you'll be looked at like you're being racist even though you just I'm, I'm a big believer of like everyone should just get along and it's it's at the end of the day it's your actions that make you a bad person not your race or your religion or anything except how you treat people like don't be a dick and everything is good you know <laughs> don't be a dick um i don't know if you know anything about american football but um do you know anything about american football i i I know as much as i've learned playing madden (laughs) okay that's actually better than um most people that from different countries so me and my family are really 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 big minnesota vikings fans really big american football is like i play american football it's just in our it's in our it's in our um it's in our blood and my dad so minnesota vikings rivals with the green bay packers and so my dad just got a shirt that was like, uh, meet Dick. Dick is a Packers fan. Don't be a dick, basically, because it's like we have this big thing against rivalry. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so uh, that's just funny because I was just thinking, like, don't be a dick. Just don't be a dick. And uh, so in this case, don't be a Packers fan. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, I think that's, I think that's, um, it's interesting. All right. So my, not that I'm uncultured and uneducated on other countries, but I am. Um, I have no. I, I know what apartheid is, and I know that it was, or, a, um, or I know that it is was a basically racial segregation in South Africa. But can you just like tell me what it is and tell the listeners what it is like from your eyes as a South African? Because I, um, like I said, I'm an I'm an American. I'm an idiot. You know. Yeah. Other well, well. Once again, like um, I I didn't grow up in it. I don't. So I don't want to talk out of my place. It was basically um, a lot of areas were whites only and people, you were arrested 
weren't white and you were in certain areas, you couldn't use certain bathrooms, you couldn't go to the same places as the white people. It was basically all your black side of the t train tracks, basically, and your white side, and you weren't allowed to mix at all. And that was basically it. And black people had no human rights, basically. Or if they did, they had the bare minimum. And a lot of countries ended up boycotting South Africa to, uh, in a protest where and like our sports and stuff was influenced where they were like as long as you keep doing this we're not going to be involved with you and then at the end of the day uh, Nelson Mandela came along the ANC which is um, the big South African party that's currently still ruling and um, yeah we we became a new a new South Africa under the blanket of um, the rainbow nation which is all colors and all heritages and everything just together in peace and harmony and for the most part it goes good <laughs> but you still get your yeah. a lot of older people that are still um both on the white side and the black side you still get people that are very hung up on mm -hmm. on the past and that's still it like i guess it's their right to be like if you got wronged you don't want to just move on from that but mm -hmm. at the same time holding back on to stuff like that just isn't fixing the present definitely so i don't know if you know the george floyd incident that just happened in um the yeah States. yeah so and do you know what jim crow is uh no I don't think it's so. basically the 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 time frame uh well not jim crow exactly but the time from the jim crow era was basically the time frame where we had racial segregation in the united states the 60s i believe um and then um do you know who martin luther king jr is yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Martin Luther King Jr. came around and, and Rosa Parks and a bunch of other people and then the C Civil Rights Acts uh, got passed. But there was a like time... I, what are you saying? No, no, sorry. Sorry to interrupt. No, but I'm um, thinking about it now, actually. Like, I feel like both countries more or less had the same um, series of events that mm -hmm. led them from, from oppression to the modern age where um, Nelson Mandela, for example, was like the South African Martin Luther King where mm -hmm. he fought against them and there was a lot of uh, violent protests, but in terms of police firing at protesters and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And at the end of the day, yeah, sorry uh, to interrupt you again. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's actually good. I just thought, I think it's actually absolutely just insane. The fact that so American population, it's, predominantly white um there are like i said 13 percent african americans i think higher than that is hispanics um but you know the fact that you guys still had racial segregation and apartheid in a country that's 76 percent african black uh, yeah. black africans um is insane because like that means the minority were the ones that took control do you think that's because of the English, um, not immigration, the English just power that they had when they immigrated there? Or do you think that it came, like, because I I think it's really, like, you can understand how 50% of the, of the population can control 13%, but I'm just trying to figure out how 9% control 76%. Um, I th I think in the in the past few years or in the like last two decades or something, the um, percentages might have shifted a lot, um, where it might have not always been as because South Africa is also very overpopulated. I feel like um, like our poorer areas and informal settlements, for example, have a way higher um, people per area, but that might also just be poverty in general. But um, it's it's just it's a weird um, concept because technically the British c colonized South Africa at some point as well, but the Europe like the Dutch was first, I believe, where the Dutch came to South Africa, colonized it, and then at some point the British came and they tried to colonize South Africa from the British and or from the Dutch, and then they went at war, and then at some point whoever won went to war against the native um, Zulu tribes of South Africa. And it, it, it's just been this whole power shuffle between like people wanting more land. It just ambition is a poison sometimes. You can say that again. 
I do want to know some things about you and how you got into YouTube and animation and everything, though. Um, yeah, because my history on South Africa is not the best. <laughs> it's better than anyone I've ever met. I, you're the – no, okay, that's not true. I've met some people from Africa. Um, we had – I know we had some pastors, uh, Episcopalian pastors from Kenya, but um, and I also knew some other people who whose parents immigrated here from um, – other countries in Africa, but I've never met in a South African before. So you are the first person that I've ever talked to from South Africa. So that's good. Yeah, I can't think of much. Well, yeah, South Africa has. I think Charlize Theron is probably the most famous South African. Elon Musk. Elon Musk. That yeah. That, I, I don't know. How I forgot about him. Yeah, that's it. That's the one that I think. Uh, Trevor Noah is South African too, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, Trevor Noah. Um, I don't know if you know the band the Anfur or something. Mm-hmm. They made that like oh, they, they made they oh, they made some weird fucking music, like <laughs> some real like some creepy uh, like almost demonic type visuals. But then it's yeah. these like electric like dance EDM type. It, <laughs> it's weird. I'll I'll send you a link later. Yeah, definitely. Um, so. How did you get into animating things? I love your animations, by the way. I love the way they look. Um, they remind me of like some, like not really Rick and Morty, but just kind of like the Rick and Morty vibe. And I'm a really, really big Rick and Morty fan. So um, love it. Like love the stuff you're doing. Um, I love the Travis Scott ones, the with the McDonald's always. That's the best oh, yeah. thing. Makes me cry laughing. Yeah, you're really good at it. So how did you get into it? Okay, well. Um... Back in the day, um, when I was still high school, I really wanted to get into cinematography. Like, my goal was I want to, like, shoot music videos. I want to do photo shoots. But getting bands and stuff to give you that, like, first chance of, like, hey, come come shoot some stuff. I, I've always found that extremely difficult. Everyone always just had a thousand excuses and stuff. And then I was like, well, I'm going to – I've always loved drawing. I've always had a sort of interest in animation but never really – researched or looked into it and then when i couldn't get any bands or anything to just like let me shoot them i was like well if i can't get like actors or a cast or anything i'm just going to animate draw my own like cast don't need to go to a location because i was still high school so you don't have that transport or anything i was like i'm just gonna give animation a shot and then we stayed on a farm which was like pretty like 10 we're like 30 minutes out of town of the main town. We stayed on a farm. So I had a lot of free time. So I slowly started just like playing around with animation and really got into it. But only after I finished high school, I really started like improving or like practicing to get better. Of high school, I've been doing it time 